I think these two problems means um, the intelligent buildings will not yet be used for residential purpose in Hong Kong. Maybe when the technology is more developed and the construction costs can be lowered, we will see some of them. So that's the final point of our presentation. To conclude, in the, this presentation, our objective was to show the advantages and the disadvantages of intelligent buildings and then discuss why this type of building is not used in Hong Kong. Polly has told you about the advantages which include the lower running courses and better environment, while I have mentioned the drawbacks including high construction costs, the need for careful management, and the possibility of technical problems. Finally, I said why as yet there are no intelligent residential buildings in Hong Kong. There are two reasons. The high construction costs would need to even higher flat price, and there is also a need for careful management. It appears that Hong Kong doesn't have mature enough property management companies to handle these uh, needs. Nevertheless, we do recommend that the possibility of using intelligent buildings for residential purpose should be further explored. Perhaps the government could take a lead by shouldering the higher construction costs of um, building public housing using intelligent features. Also, government-trained civil servants um, might be more reliable in handling the special needs of an intelligent building once built. Well, that's the end of our presentation. We hope you have found it useful, and we would like to thank you again for listening. On our last slide, you can see our full reference list. And now, if you have any questions, Pauline and myself would be happy to answer them. So, any questions?